Hi class, welcome back to lesson two. In today's lesson, we're gonna continue our conversation of the impact of charitable giving inside of your retirement finances by talking more specifically about a five-step process that we created called Brighter Giving that can help you execute some of these charitable giving strategies, whether you do it by yourself or you work with your advisor. This helps you give you a structure towards executing and simplifying what you're doing. Okay, so let's kind of dive into it. You can see here, these are the five steps of the brighter giving process. Step one is a suitability audit. Step two is a positioning of your qualified assets. Step three is determining the donation amount and timing. Step four is the setup and transfers and reporting. And step five is a continual ongoing annual audit to keep you on track. Let's start at step one and let me walk through and talk through each one of these so you can understand with a little bit more clarity. Step one is the suitability audit. We want you to be able to determine either for yourself or working with your advisor the suitability of choosing any of these tax strategies. Now through this retirement taxation masterclass, I believe we've kind of walked through this suitability audit as we've gathered information and calculated in the impact worksheet and also on your tax story if it's a good fit for you. This is just a good reminder to make sure you do the suitability audit. As a general statement, the minimum that you would need to do this audit is collecting your last two years of completed tax returns to understand your tax environment where you were at and then gather together or collect your qualified accounts and get them together primarily so you know for the upcoming year what your required minimum distribution actually will be and then using that information walking through that brighter giving impact worksheet will give you the best idea of if it's a good idea for you or not based off of if you would have done it in the past this is how much you would have saved that's always good motivation to actually complete those charitable contributions when you can see how much you would have saved if you've done it in the past. Going on to step two, position your qualified assets. If you recall from our conversation about a qualified charitable distribution, that type of tax strategy can only happen from an IRA. So as you go through and identify all of your tax deferred or pre-tax plans, whether that's IRA, 401k, 403b, 457, kind of title those and what those are, you'll know whether those qualify. Now, if you're wanting to do a qualified charitable distribution and you don't have them in an IRA, part of the step two is rolling those accounts into an IRA registration. Don't worry, it's a non-taxable event. You can open up an IRA and put the balance of your 401k in there or your 403b plan, um, and it's called a direct rollover, and it's not taxable. It's only when you take it out of those accounts that it becomes taxed. So step two is positioning those assets to be appropriate. Also inside of step two is understanding if you're gonna do a in-kind donation, you need to make sure that's in a brokerage account, not a retirement account. Step three is determining the donation amount and timing. If you've gotten this far into the step, obviously you have identified yourself as being charitably inclined and there are one or a few charitable institutions that you're wanting to make a donation to. So identifying who those institutions are and how much of a donation you would want to give, either a monthly or an annual basis, is the first step. And then finding out from those institutions if they require require a charitable institution donation form to give credit to the one donating, or if they would be fine with just receiving a payment. And the second part of this is filling out those forms and getting those submitted. So I wanna make sure you understand this is not making those donations, it's just understanding with those charitable institutions if there's some special documentation needed. And then the timing of that is, are you gonna make those donations on a monthly basis, semi-annually basis, or just once a year. Going into step four, this is setting up the transfers and reporting. So this is the step where those payments actually get made to those charities of choice. So this step involves reaching out to your brokerage account or your custodian or your advisor and having him fill out the appropriate distribution forms from your accounts and ultimately submitting those through to your investment custodian. Because if you recall, whether it's an in-kind distribution or a qualified charitable distribution, these donations are not coming directly from you via check or cash. They're coming from your accounts directly, keyword directly, to the charity of choice to qualify for those tax benefits. So 
Step four is setting up those transfers, either yourself or with your advisor. Now, step five is an annual audit that ensures that you're still on track with your charitable contributions, as well as still distributing your full RMD and avoiding any penalty. So in an annual audit, you'll want to recalculate your current RMD or required minimum distribution, redetermine what your charitable amounts are gonna be that year. And we usually recommend you complete all of this by the end of the year, hopefully by October or November to determine those donations and ultimately distribute the remaining required minimum distribution if needed so that you don't have a penalty by not withdrawing them. So these five steps are a very simple process that you can do on your own or be guided through with your advisor to ensure that you can execute on several of those charitable giving strategies throughout retirement. Great. I love this conversation about charitable giving. It means a lot to me because I'm confident that it's what we actually give in life, not what we get that determines our happiness. So we will see you in the next lesson.